Hello, I'm Ted Gambardella with Distinctive Style Magazine, and we're here with Tim Martin Gleason, who is starring in Dallas, Texas, in The Phantom of the Opera. Tim, we want to thank you for being here. Absolutely. Good and, to be here. And, and you just told me you're from New Jersey. Grew up in New Jersey, Piscataway, New Jersey. Tim has been in uh, several other shows. He was in Romeo, Romeo and Juliet. It was a musical version, and uh, I, I had the great fortune of playing Romeo in that the first time it was ever put on stage, which was really cool. Well, that was good. What year was that? That was way back in 1999. That was about 10 years ago. And before that, you were in business. What did you, you do before? Uh, I went off, uh, I went to a liberal arts school, and uh, for four years I went off into business before I became an actor, and I had a whole bunch of jobs because I was so miserable, just trying to find really? something that made me happy, and then I finally ended up in, in an accounting piece, uh, accounting job for about three years, and did that for about three years uh, before I took the plunge and decided you know, to become an actor. And did you go to New York to do that? Yeah, I mean, I was working out in West Orange, New Jersey, which is only about 30 minutes west, and... Uh, uh, to be honest, uh, I had been singing my whole life, and okay. um, when I was so miserable in the, in the corporate world, I made some crazy decision that I was going to somehow go to New York and get discovered and be able to leave all this, all this job behind. And, uh, and you actually did it. And I did, and I was in a piano bar at about 2 in the morning, drunk as a skunk, <laughs> singing, <laughs> singing some song, and uh, couldn't have been that drunk because it must have sounded pretty good, but I was definitely you know, having a good time, and... Uh, there was an agent there. And, uh, really? Yeah. And what year was this? This was back in 1997. It was a real agent. He said, listen, I want to make yeah, you yeah. a star, boy. Yeah, it was, a, it was a real agent. It wasn't an agent that said, give me $2,000 and then we'll, you know. <laughs> and meet me back. Yeah, there. exactly. <laughs> no, it was, uh, she said, so who, she's like, you're great. Who, who represents you? And I said, I work out in New Jersey. I have a nine-to-five job. And she said, oh, well, if you ever change your mind, give me a call. And I, d I did. <laughs> and it worked. And what was your first job? My first job was <clears throat> I knew I wanted to join the union pretty immediately. You know, you can be a non-union actor, um, you know, and do shows. But if you're going to be on Broadway, if you're going to do national tours like Phantom and stuff, right. you have to be a union actor. So my first gig was a really terrible children's theater gig, but it gave me my union card. So wow. uh, it was called The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And we traveled around the country in a van wow. <laughs> for 13 weeks and playing in you know, cafeterias slash auditoriums, you know, and we'd get there at 9 a.m., set up for an hour, do a 10.30 show, and then move on to the next city. And it was, it was a rough life for 13 weeks, but, you know, it was a means to an end. It got me my card, and then I was start able to start auditioning in New York, and, you know, here I am. Wow, and you, have you worked continually since then? Um, well, I didn't, I've been with Phantom since December of 2001 continually. Wow. I've been with three different companies of them. I... I uh, did this so tour nine years nine years I did this tour for three and a half years and then they invited me to Broadway and I did the Broadway production as Raul for, for a year and then they asked me to open the Vegas company of Phantom as Raul and I did that for a year and a half and then I came back to Broadway for two and then they asked me about a year ago to come out as Phantom and be a full time Phantom so, so for eight years I've been continuously employed with Phantom and it's been an absolute blessing and, then, and is it easy, easy for you to stay in the character after all these years of doing this stuff? Well, you, you, I, well I wouldn't have the job, I guess, if, if, uh, <laughs> if, it, if, if it wasn't. So, I mean, it's, uh, that's the challenge, you know, of doing it so long. Um, that, that is the challenge. But, you know, having done the show with so many different Christines, with so many different companies, it, it really does stay fresh. And it's, and it's not that difficult. And, and the reaction from the people is so, it's so genuine and so sincere that that, that keeps you going as well. Yeah. Did you know much about the role before you took it? Or Not really. I'd seen it a couple times. Um, you know, of all the of all the big Cameron Macintosh shows of, of the of the Phantom and Les Mis and, and Saigon, Phantom is the one show I never thought I would do. Really, I thought definitely Miss Saigon. I wanted to play Chris so bad, and, and Les Mis. I figured it. You know, someday I'll, I'll have to do Les Mis, and here I am in Phantom. You know, so um, I just knew it was a very difficult thing. So, and that's kind of why I never thought I'd be part of it. But, you know, here I am. Well, we, 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 nothing but great reviews about your acting and your voice and stuff. Have you had voice training? I didn't take a voice lesson until I was about 28 years old. Uh, 28 years old. I'd been singing in church choir uh, from the time I was about six years old. Um, and, uh, and I never studied it. I never took acting classes. I, I just wanted to be a baseball player. Really? Yeah, I played baseball in high school, and uh, I was pretty terrible, but I was good enough to make the team. Um, and then, you know, I'd, I'd change my cleats into, you know, running shoes to go do play practice, you mm -hmm. know, at night. And, uh, and I would do the musicals there. And, and I was only doing musicals because it was fun and I could sing a little bit. But it was never a goal of mine until I got into my 
you know, late twenties where I was like, I got to do something with my life here. This is, you know. Well, you've certainly done a great thing. <laughs> well, how do you stay fresh after all these uh, years of performing? Well, I think, uh, <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, the big wigs come out probably about once a month, the people from New York and it's, okay. and, and it's their job to look at the show, make sure it's still what it should be. Um, and th- they stay, they stay on you, you know, and that's their job. So, um, they really help with that. You know, they'll come out and tell you and they say, you know, it's getting a little off, you know, in, in, in that regard. And, and uh, you know, they, they, they push you really hard. Nobody slacks off in, in far that department. You would think in, with a show right. that's 17 years running that people would start to get lazy. But, but no, not at all. So th- that really helps. So you, you mentioned that the audience uh, sort of inspires you. What type of audience do you like? Or? Um, well... Uh, I like an audience that l- likes the show. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, everyone has different reactions to the show in every city. Uh, that's what's really interesting about touring. Y- you know, you get to a new city and you play, a, you play, a, you, uh, you do a show, right? And then that night you realize you're like, oh, we're in a different city because people react differently. You know, we um, we played Durham uh, a couple months ago and we learned very quickly that Durham was a very a polite audience, mm-hmm. but they raved about the show. But they were just a little more subdued. They, they didn't let's... clap and cheer. Well, they clapped and cheered, but not till the end. Have you ever been embarrassed on the stage? Or... Uh, I don't think so, or if I have, no one's told me. <laughs> Do you take a lucky charm with you or anything? Oh, God, no. No, no, no. We're all not superstitious point, or anything? No, at this point, it's, I mean, it's a job. Now, we're all professionals, you know what I mean? I mean, high school... I'd throw up backstage before I have to go on because really? I was so nervous. But but at this point, um, I think if you're taking a lucky charm on stage, then you're something's not right. Your luck is over. <laughs> yes, right? exactly, exactly. But everybody wants to know how do you put on your mask and how long does it take? And uh, it takes about an hour. Um, and uh, basically, I just sit in a chair, okay. in a makeup chair, and uh, Rudy Guerrero, who's our makeup artist, he he basically does everything on me. It is um, two wigs and four prosthetic pieces. And, uh, and then make up all around that. So it takes, the whole process takes about an hour. And um, it's actually a nice way to kind of um, center yourself and, and get focused for the role because I, I don't have a choice but to sit there and let him do his magic. So it kind of relaxes me and focuses me for what's ahead. So is it painful or anything? No, not at all. It, it, feels, it feels a little, um, you know, when it goes on at first, it feels a little sticky because it's glue. Um, but once it dries, you don't even feel it. Okay, so what's next? This is your this is your last tour, your last city for the tour this year. No, no, this this tour, um, this particular tour has been running seventeen years nonstop. Right. Now I obviously haven't been part of it for seventeen right. years. People come and go, but the tour still goes on. And the way they replace people, it's all fluid and, and stuff, so you never even notice. But this tour is ending in November, so this will be the last time this tour. This tour has been through Dallas five times over the seventeen okay. years, and the tour's closing, so never again. Um, so the last time Dallas will see the Phantom. That is correct. Now, eventually, somewhere down the road, they'll probably redesign the show and send it back out, maybe make it a little smaller, maybe. Uh, I don't know what their plans are, but that could be three years from now. That could be ten years from now. There wow. is no, at the moment, there's no plans uh, to send out another tour. So this is, this is kind of the end of a... Uh, uh, so this is the end of your job with the Phantom? Uh, in November, it will be. Well, you know, it'll be the end of my job with Phantom with this company, but, you know, there's a Broadway okay. company, there's so a Vegas there company. There are other tours that are still going around. Well, they're not tours. There's a, oh, the Broadway version. Oh, which they is, stay in Vegas all the time. And the one in Vegas stays in Vegas. So uh, the tour will be done. Um, but, but uh, you know, they always say, once you're with Phantom, you never leave. Thank you. We're with Tim <laughs> Martin Gleason with the Phantom of the Opera. Thank right you very much, Dallas. man. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir.